Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to this game's tutorial. Today, we actually make our research work. So remember this research, you get 10% more gold on selling item. It actually works now. As you can tell, a silk is usually worth 100. But since we have 6, this is 600. Plus the 10% on every single one of those, that's 660. And we also make our ability work. So as you can tell over here, we're gonna hit this guy for 3 damage. If we use our boost, we should be hitting um, harder, but also faster. So we hit 4, and we also cast a little bit faster. It's hard to tell right now because we don't have a lot of range. But it does work, I swear. So guys, that is what we're going to be doing. Um, without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so guys, this should be the final episode where we actually take care for ability and research at the same time. After that, we're going to be moving on to, um, well, we have to make a pause button to return back to the actual hub, and then we'll be doing some hub stuff until we're finally ready to just put in all the research and all the abilities we need later on. Like, it's only like content at that point, but all the functionality are going to be there. So, we are actually going to give a purpose to these. But beforehand, of course, I forgot a little thing in the last episode. So as you can tell here, boost morale actually cost us 50 gold. If we click here, nothing happened, and that's fine because at one point we'll have some um, pop-up manager that is going to take care of just popping us in the error and saying we, you don't have enough gold. And uh, that's cool. Let's say we do have enough gold and we run this, then it's active. That is also fine. The issue I have is say that boost morale is actually not something that costs money. It is on zero cost. I don't necessarily want to see the um i don't want to see this thing here i don't want to see times zero because i mean what's the purpose of that so we're going to be modifying the ability container of that um well of every single ability really quickly and it's going to take a moment just to just make sure that uh if we don't have any costs we don't show that inside of here everything is going to happen inside of these lines here so in that if statement we are going to add another if statement. We're going to say if base ability that cost is equal equal to zero. If that's the case, let's open up the bracket. Some things are going to happen else. Some other things are going to happen. Oh, that's kind of obvious, right? Um, <laughs> let's take what we had here. So the uh, button transform get child set active. We're going to put that in the else statement. Now, if the cost is zero, we are going to duplicate this and just inverse these two together. The same exact way we do when it's um, not ready. So, if it is ready, then what we need to do is actually change the text button or the, the button message. So we're going to say text at the third index dot text is equal to use. Something like that. And now, um, if it is ready and it has a cost we're just going to keep that string here so take it put it in the else statement the rest should actually stay the exact same and that's it really that's all we needed to do so let's give it a small try before we move on to more interesting stuff click here go in the game use it says use now say we have an actual cost to this so 50 gold we go here and it says 50 gold right so we got that out of the way, let's put the cost back on zero because boost morale is going to be something that is free. It just has a cooldown, so here we go. Super morale stuff. Talking about that super morale stuff, let's double click on it. And guys, this is where every single ability is going to have something different. Now, um, they might not all happen in here, they might not all happen inside of that protected void, override void action. They might happen somewhere else, just as a check. Boost morale is one of these. It is one of these action or abilities that is not going to revolve around this function here. But however, when, whenever we do call this buff and we do call bu um, boost morale, we could play a sound and or an effect. But it's not going to affect the, the real gameplay, it's just going to affect the feedback. Now, boost morale is something that is going to increase the um, tower damage and also attack speed of our tower temporarily. Let's start with the damage. So 
public float damage modifier and we could put that uh, say equal to 0 0.25 public float attack speed modifier uh, and we could reduce the attack speed by 0 0.1 so that would mean we'd be able to rack up a, an additional auto attack every 10 seconds or something like that uh, maybe even boost it to 0 0.25 as well okay we only need this value there to be public we don't need anything else and inside of the action we play a sound or an effect that's all we need in this where the real logic happens is inside the place where we actually shoot wherever we actually use these so in this case we are working with the damage we're also working with the attack speed these two things are stats that our tower has and the whole shooting mechanic happens on our tower so this is where we're going to be declaring a float not a float sorry we're going to be declaring a field a private boost morale field so the um the boost morale ability as a type and let's actually assign it somewhere so should we do this in the start can we do this in the start we can't and the reason we can't is because hmm or actually no never mind we can it is something possible and we might as well do it here did we forget to do something in this let me just check for a second I think we forgot to do the ability manager ability manager instance that initialize yeah we forgot to call the initialize <laughs> my bad so we are gonna we're gonna initialize all the abilities and we have a, if we have a look at this it pretty much is going to hit the uh, init for every single one of those so every abilities every base ability has this initialize call and this is what is being called so it's just going to load the save game so we weren't doing that before but now we do it just because I forgot this call okay okay so we've got this out of the way another error that uh, we would have caught on later on if it wasn't for now so below this I would like to actually assign my boost morale boost morale is going to equal ability manager dot instance dot um, abilities dot find a a dot ability is equal equal to ability dot boost morale we can do it like this and actually cast the whole thing as boost morale like this the type we could do it that way or we could simply say boost morale is equal to get component type of boost morale since I want to be constant I'm going to use this because um, the only reason I'm able to use the get component is because I know that the research not the research but the abilities are on the same uh, game object as the tower but it not might it might not always be the case so I'll be using this long call here okay so now boost morale is set we have a reference to it we can go over to wherever we use it in that case that would be um, there is a shoot somewhere oh so shoot enemy and also the attack speed we're gonna take care of in a moment let's do the shoot enemy first it is fairly easier if we have a look at this it pretty much just says okay this is where we get our damage then this is where we get our crit our crit depends on the actual damage so we need to sneak in around here this is the boost oops boost morale modifier and all we gotta be doing like all we gotta be saying really is just if boost morale our uh, private field that ability is active like this then we simply do oops we do damage is plus equal damage times boost morale that damage modifier now the damage modifier is something in between 0 and 1 so let's just calculate this right here if we have 15 damage we're gonna do plus equal so 50 plus 50 times 0 0.25 we're gonna end up with this amount of damage um, this also has to be cast as a int I believe because we oh no never mind our damage is actually a float so never mind what I just said um, yeah I think we could actually test this out right now actually at least test the damage part so I'm going to open up my scene go under the preloader 
start this, and if we just boost our damage a little bit so do we have any gold, we do. Um, 300 is not enough, so as you can tell right now I do 4 damage but I'm supposed to do only 3 according to this. The boost is still active, let's have a look at when this finishes, right now I'm on 4. And at this point I should be back to my actual real damage. In this case, 3. So as you can tell it did have an impact while it was active. Alright, so as for the damage that is done, now let's tackle the attack speed and I think we find it here on this very line. That's still in the update of the tower. And as you can tell we do a stats helper that instance gets that value and a stats speed. Um, what I was thinking about doing is actually putting it straight inside of this uh, get stat value function. And I think that's a good idea actually. So I will hit F12 on this. It will take me to the stats helper, then the get stats value. Over here, at the very top of the script, I will create a little section for abilities, modifiers, and this is going to be a private boost morale again, boost morale. And um, how exactly do I find this one? Okay, so this is a little bit more complicated and I think I've lied to you earlier when I said that um, I will use this everywhere. In fact, I don't even think it's a good idea anymore because this is this has an update, uh, not an update, sorry, a awake, and it's actually being called before the ability manager. It might be called before that. So to keep things simple and not to break the code, I will go over to my the tower script and I'll do something way more easier than I thought it would be. We all we know that like the abilities are always there no matter what because they're on the tower and the tower does not get destroyed on load. So we can say boost moral is equal to the tower instance get component. And we're getting the component in this case boost moral. So doing this is going to just work every time 100% sure. I will take this whole line, go over to my stats helper, do the same thing. So boost morale is now equal to a get component, get the uh, boost morale. So once that is completed we can head over to the actual get stat value and where we get our speed, over here, that's our speed. We're going to change things a little bit so we're going to say float r is equal to this, this whole thing. And um, or you know what? Let's not let's not mess this around too much. We're simply going to add it afterwards. So this whole thing that we're returning before minus boost morale dot attack speed modifier, which I think is zero point twenty five. So minus zero point twenty five. And I even think that we get to see it in the UI. I am not sure. Let's hit play. Have a look at this. Oh. Here we go, so we have an error here. So it pretty much says that uh, the tower, okay, so it's because the tower instance does not exist. Hmm. Okay, let's not complicate things too much. We're going to remove this whole, the tower instance. Simply going to do a get component. And uh, same thing here, because, you know, the tower instance is actually this script. All right. And now I'm thinking about it, we can use a get component here, no problem. We can use a get component here, no problem. And if we ever have to use, um, if we ever have to find an ability from somewhere really shady in our code, we can use a dot find instead and it's going to work just fine as well. So let's leave it to that. We're sure we have no error now, we can hit play. Gonna head over in our preloader. Have a look at this now. We are still on cooldown, so in order to not wait for like that long, I'll reduce the cooldown to say, um, let's put that on 10 seconds, and the duration is going to be 10 seconds as well. Maybe 13 seconds, why not? Oh, it's something we're going to be fixing really quickly is uh, this line. Um, let's put that in a temporary modifier. So float modifier is equal to, and then we open up the a bracket to make a boost, not a boost, a ternary operator. Inside of here we're going to be checking is the ability 
active right now. If it is, let's put that on boost morale, attack speed modifier, else zero. And we're going to say minus modifier, just like this. All right, so this should actually clear things up a little bit. Let's go test this out in the game now. So we have our cost zero. We have our cooldown, which I just bumped down to 13. Uh, duration 10 seconds. Attack speed with the fire, I'm going to be doing um, 0 0.5. So whenever it's active, we can cast uh, one more attack every two seconds, I think. Is that it? That makes sense. Let's try this out. Going to hit play now. Go here. And uh, I think the ability was re was active, so it's active right now. Let's just turn it off, go back in the game. And let's check this out. So right now I should deal 3 damage at a normal pace. So that's a normal pace. As soon as I click this button, it's going to deal 4 damage and attack a little bit faster. Let's actually check it out on the next wave. Meanwhile, I can go ahead and just sell stuff, why not? Good times. Increase the range. Okay, let's get ready for that. It should go a little bit faster. It might be really hard to see actually, but let's try it out. So use. And it does cast a little bit faster. It's just hard to see. I promise it does. Um, but yeah, and you also tell that the damage went higher as well. And that's pretty much it for this whole boost morale thing. Now the other one that is really interesting that we've made is the research. We haven't done the research yet, we haven't just plugged in the actual action of it, but we're gonna do right that right now. It's actually fairly simple. All we gotta be saying is, um, well, our research is called the Tradesman, so we gotta go wherever we get the price of, the, of every single loot, and when we do get the price, just add a modifier to it. So in this case, I think we were getting the price instead inside of the Loot Manager. So let's open up the Loot Manager right here and we do get price get loot price per unit and at the very bottom of that function we've made we even made like a small comment section so all we're gonna be saying in here is if research manager that instance is research unlocked research tradesman if it is unlock the tradesman's research Let's do price plus equal to price times 0.1f. So we do the actual price plus 10% of that price. And that should actually work. And it should actually work in the UI as well. So let's have a look at this. And why is that not working? Oh, I better cast this as an int as well. Just like this. Now everything should be working fine. We go in the game. And we cannot convert this flow to an end. Okay, let's just put that in parentheses like this. Good. So, currency. As you can tell, we have three rock. They're usually 50 gold each, but the price is 165. As you can tell, the price just got bumped by 15, which is 10% um, of 50 by, and then times 3. We have a single rock, should be 50, now it's 55. A silk should be 100, now it's 110. And let's actually see if it does reflect here, so... Yep, my amount just went up by 110. And guys, that is pretty much what we're going to be needing to do for every single research and new ability we have. If it's more funky, then we'll have a whole video on it, but um, that's really all we need for this one. So, I'm glad we finished these two things, we can now add over and do some more easy and more relaxing stuff. Let's just plug in like a button somewhere up here to go back to the hub and then we can tackle the whole hub thing, which should be fairly interesting. So guys, I hope you like, I hope you learned something. If you did, please leave me a like on the video. I really appreciate that. If you have any question or comment, please leave them on my Facebook page. I tend to answer more there because there are less, less crowd. And uh, yeah, so guys, subscribe for more tutorials like these and I will see you in the next one.